Hello, hello. Happy Monday. Welcome to the stream. Hey, Chrisica. Good to see you. Um, and yeah, you know that thing where the last couple of streams I've said, hey, I'm, I'm inexplicably um, feeling a bit energized and focused today. That's not happened this week. Nope. All gone. Uh, I've taken several naps throughout the day and don't feel particularly better for it. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, maybe we'll get there eventually. So, yeah, again, I figure it might be like a little short. Just going to wrap up everything Ultima 7 related before we get into whatever game we're doing next. And uh, that's still a bit up in the air. Yeah, it just happens. It certainly does. And it's kind of hot, and it's going to get hotter. And this really kills my ability to um, be near the computer with all these monitors blaring light at me in every direction. Having big, comfy headphones stretched to my head. So, yeah, we'll see how well I can stream for the rest of December. Which, by the way, it is December. Uh, Introduced by our friend, uh, the whole DOS retro streaming community just get together and do a bunch of DOS streams for the t-shirt. Got the t-shirt. There at my man boots, just just a shirt. It'll probably look a lot better on. Get them. Uh, RTM's little merch store that we've set up. The design is by Fractal Mind. Um, yeah, I, I feel like that's about it in terms of announcements. Really don't have a big plan for today's stream other than, hey, remember how we would say we we're going to kill Lord British or we we're going to show you that thing that the game does? Yeah, well, we've beaten the game now, so we may as well get into playing around with it. Uh... So here we are, at the Black Gate. Uh, Abraham, Elizabeth, Orskis and Hook are all very, very dead. And the Guardian told us at the end of last stream, uh, you can destroy the Black Gate now, but you will never return to your beloved Earth, or you can come through now and go home. I say, no. I say there is a third option here. We don't destroy the Black Gate, but we do train two cannons on it. Uh, Shimino and Dupre here can uh, man the fort. Got some caltrops just to be extra spicy for the Guardian if he tries to step through. And uh, we'll just leave it at that and go have fun around Britannia. And cheat like hell, because we can. A bit hungry. Unfortunately, I can't cheat the food. So, uh, I mean, I can cheat food into existence, but I can't just make people stop eating all the time. Time for the funny side of things. Third option's always good, yeah. Um, a lot that we could show off in the game. The sun is coming through the curtains here and it's just kind of obliterating my ability to see here, but... <clears throat> Let's see. Where to first? Well, for starters... Um, over here in the mountains somewhere. Yeah. So this whole area that we went into, Dungeon Destard or Dungeon... We went in here to get to the Sphere Generator, which was roundabouts here, I think. Yeah, here we are in the Sphere Puzzle. Uh, perhaps? More sparkly stuff? Let's 
It's here somewhere. We'll follow this road. Oh yeah, that's right, the game slowed down here. Bomb fluff tornado? Bum raid? Warning. Warning. Oh no, it's a bum raid. Uh, Neon Shade Kitchen, thank you so much for the follow. Um, hello everyone, wow, welcome on in. We're here to burn, no, we're here to bum you out. Welcome on in, Hairball. Um, hi, hello there, welcome. MCC banned, we, we can ban her actually. Uh, ban. There we go. Um, hi, welcome on in. Let me just uh, pull this for a moment. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Well, I mean, it, that's still quite nice. That's my just chatting scene. Give me more than I'll do it properly. <laughs> Maybe later. Um, Bumfluff Tornado, thank you so much for the raid. Uh, let me give you an old shout out here. Um, I saw you were streaming some Game Boy games. Yeah, GBA games starting with A. Are you going to do the whole alphabet? Nice. I don't even know how she came in on my channel. I don't know how she's banned on my channel. Um, let me give you the other shout out too, because I can do that now. Um, yeah, thank you so much for the raid. Hi. Um, I'm just here derping around in some Ultima 7. And, uh, gonna sort of like we finished the game last week but I figured um, yeah why why the hell not we can derp around a bit oh Ayolo is in the fire uh, oops um, distracted thank you for the stream um, everyone go follow bomb fluff tornado if you haven't already There we go. Um, yes. Um, welcome on in. Uh, my name is Neko, if you haven't come across me before. I tend to do DOS retro streams, but sometimes I don't. Cool story. I should wait and run, but i got to make some food. No worries, Bon. Go, go make some food. Get yourself some dinner. I had pizza. Pizza was nice. We'll have some chocolate brownie bites. Here without me tipping them all over the keyboard. Um, it is very nice. We're also making pizza. Cool. Um, enjoy. Meanwhile, uh, everyone else who chooses to stay and not have pizza, um, we were just talking about how uh, one of the secret areas in the game left the small sphere. We did not, Jana. We destroyed the sphere generator here, and there's actually a secret room hidden away elsewhere in the dungeon, round about here, and it's basically a trap for anyone who's cheating, like we are doing now, and teleporting around, because there's no normal way you could reach this room. I happened to stumble across it. This is the sphere. There it is. Dark century. I'll just move myself in here. Bastard, you thieving scoundrel bastard! Perhaps the only thing more ridiculous than your pathetic attempt to destroy the Black Gate without paying proper dues is your inevitably an embarrassing explanation to the friend to whom you are, no doubt showing this, or in my case, several friends. For the atrocious crime of cheating against the virtues of Britannia, I find you guilty. Judgment rendered. Sentence selected. Death. Unfortunately, Lord British, I have already enabled the power avatar mode, so um, I can't be killed. And uh, 
Lord British here can't be killed normally. And now everyone is saying, oink, that's weird. Oink. Oink. How very strange. Well, we could just teleport out. Oh, that's weird. Yellow Jana, Spark, Sentry, they're all lying on the floor. And if I click them, it says oink. What about this crate? Oink. I kind of love the perspective. Yeah, Neon Shake It. This is... I think really very few games did this. Certainly only Ultima 7 Part 1 and 2. With the Force perspective. Maybe it's a weird anti-cheat. You're right on the money, Neon Shake It. If we teleport out of here... Let's go somewhere like, I don't know, the castle. We find that everyone is asleep. Uh... Oh, that's not a light, that's annoying. Uh, but yeah, everyone is asleep. I think that was the real Lord British that teleported to us. We can still talk to him. And if we talk to him, neither a borrower nor a prophet be. Never crook a gift moon cow in the hammer. Neither a borrower nor a prophet be. There is no jello flavoring for you today, little conifer, only death. Homeboy, homeboy, you damned reptile. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's ephatite stud muffin. A prophet, a prophet, my kingdom for a prophet. Honour thy father and thy mole person, smarty pants. Damn the crankshafts. Constipated speed ahead. Oh my whitey, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Um, and if anyone else were awake, we would get much the same kind of dialogue from them too. Um, Batlin should have survived this because it's very similar to the Armageddon spell. Of course, we we already defeated Batlin, so he's teleported away. Yep. Hug James Neko. Thank you, Captain Sumi. Uh, I haven't implemented my hug command yet because I want to be all extra about it. But welcome on in. Uh, let me give you a shout out. Captain Sumi is going to be streaming tonight. Um, uh, her time zone, anyway. It's, it's tricky. After a bit of hiatus. Um, so why don't you go check her out? Um, so yeah, basically all items in the game, all the tooltips that would appear, now say oink. And you're unable to have normal dialogue with anyone because they just go into this rambling nonsense. Maybe Horace survived, being the evil undead lich that he is. No, it looks like he's asleep too. Of course he does normally sleep. But I do not care if there's not hug command. I hug whoever I want. Um, but yeah, basically, the game's detected you cheating and has then taken steps to make sure you can't finish the game by uh, normal means. We, we can still finish the game because we got 99% of the way there. Uh, but without being able to talk to people normally, that's kind of a problem. I wonder if the ferryman is able to speak, because the ferryman is not a normal NPC. The ferryman of Scarabray stands in his spectral boat, holding out his hand for any who would pay his price. He was a bit disgruntled. I told thee I would be here until the end of eternity. Alright, bye. Without acknowledging your goodbye, the ferryman lowers his head and holds his pole across his chest. Yeah, the ferryman not being a normal NPC. Uh, obviously, he's annoying. Um, he um, isn't affected by Armageddon or anything like that. And this sort of um, oinkification is the same thing that happens if you fail the second um, copy protection test. So the game gives you a copy protection test at the start of the game, intrinsic. Um, and to leave, you have to answer questions from the manual. But then it surprises you with a second copy protection test uh, when you try to join the Fellowship. 
and Batling goes and says, "Oh, I would be. I wouldn't be surprised if people you talked to made absolutely no sense to you." Same code that kicks in. So we'll have to reload if we want to show off any other interesting things. And what I was thinking for this kind of short stream, um, I'll show off some of the game secrets and then we can pick a place to go move into. Um, because that's how me and my sister used to play this game back in We didn't really pay too much attention to the main quest. We found a nice house that was either unoccupied or soon to be unoccupied, if you know what I mean. And we would um, redecorate it. I have the cheats on so I can just casually put a crate inside my backpack there. And uh, we knew all the best places to go shopping for furniture and things around Britannia. Uh, which items would stay where you put them if you're using the sheets and which items wouldn't. Feed everyone up. And doing this. So that was one little small room that they hid inside the mountains because Ultima 7, given that the world map actually is all open like this and you can fly around, you can sail around on the map, the only locations in the game that they can hide these secret bits are inside the mountains. For example, I think I already showed people here, inside the Isle of the Avatar, is where the Time Lord is. And you can probably still talk to him. May I help the Avatar? The Time Lord asked. The art style of this game is growing on me. It's really nice, the Unshade Kit. Um, easily my favourite Ultima. Um, it, it is a bit weird with the Force perspective, but um, someone, I think on a f Ultima forum somewhere, pointed out that, um, you know the sort of normal isometric perspective that you might be familiar with from Ultima 8? or many, many other role-playing games. If you take how the game renders this and you rotate it 45 degrees, what you end up with is basically that isometric perspective. And someone actually tried to mod that into Exalt so that you could experience Ultima 7 in that perspective. It's really weird, but um, kind of cool that it works. Farewell, Avatar. Good luck to thee. What else is hidden in this mountain? We should be able to find a Lagna's workshop. Great, we defeated something. Come on, I know a Lagna's workshop is around here somewhere. Now this is a weird one, um, but yeah, we can jump in here. And we can see that there's fighting going on. I'm trying to remember where the dead people room is. Uh, it's near Cove, Carlfish. On your way there, basically. So we've just witnessed Alagna being murdered in real time there. And we get to uh, defeat Hook and Forskis and everyone else again. And we get to watch Batlin teleport away again, despite him not being here, because Batlin being uh, teleporting away is just a thing that happens whenever Hook dies. Batlin watches Hook's death with icy resignation. Time seems to slow as he turns to you. This battle is not done, Avatar. Dost thou imagine thyself an immortal? I I am, actually. I've switched that cheat on. The Guardian is far more. Return to your precious earth and rest. Sleep that he may visit your dreams with countless visions of death in the belly of the great sea serpent. As for me, I shall be gone. Thou shalt never find me. Farewell, Avatar. Yeah, okay, bye. And the game has... I don't know. Are we, are we crashed or are we not crashed? Time seems to be progressing, but only when I switch combat mode on and off. 
I think because Batlin isn't supposed to teleport away twice. Can I just teleport where I am here? No, it's kind of disabled the player controls. Which makes sense, I guess, because Batlin has to do his little teleport away thing. Um, it's probably disabled it so that that scene, like that cutscene, can happen. Come on. Snap out of it, Avatar. Or can I fix it here? I don't think I've ever seen a, a flag like that on the hack menu, so maybe... Game flags, tech flag, let's reload. This is why I wanted to do a lot of this later until after we've finished the game, because a lot of these things can actually glitch out the game completely. What else? Yes, uh, Carl Fish mentioned the uh, Room of the Dead. And if you teleport here, uh, as you're coming into Cove, the mountainside here, and I mean, rather than teleport in there, I can just rip the mountain apart, move myself inside. Uh, and yeah, if you remember, we flew over this place and we found the sleeping bodies of fighter, mage, paladin, fighter. Um, these are the people that we took out in that tower uh, in it's part of dungeon to start i think and they were planning you know to attack the castle britannia and everything and i think because we killed them at this height this z level they've gone to the room of the dead but they've landed on top of the mountain and if we go inside the mountain we see all of this stuff oops nope Companions are trying desperately to regroup with me. There we go. Uh, can we just cast a light spell? And... Not those spells. Something a little smaller. Uh, light. There we go. Uh, so here we are in the Room of the Dead. It's just... Every... Every entity in the game, every like NPC that is tracked and has a persistent inventory and a persistent location, has to have a persistent location. They have to have a location. The game can't track something ceasing to exist. So the way the developers worked around this was, okay, there's this one place in the game that will teleport everyone to when they die, and they leave behind a, a corpse object. So this is everyone we've killed in the game. There's Elizabeth, there's the three-headed Hydra, some ranger there for something. All NPCs that can die go here, lol. Yes, exactly, Cyclone. Now how come my light spell wore off when I had my inventory open? Um, oh, there we go. Come on. Come on, team, there we go. Uh, this is amusing. It looks like this sage person has wings. Uh, but that's just the stone harpy that we killed. And, oh hey, Forskis has woken up. How are you doing, man? I'll talk to him. Uh, there's Batlin. Talk to the Hydra. There's Hook. Let's not talk to him. Interestingly, this is a skeleton. Um, most of the skeletons you fight in the game, they're, they've got a higher number for their NPC ID. So they're just spawned in and they spawn out when you walk from. Uh, this one, let's put the number ID on. This one is 285. And I think this skeleton is one of the ones that you find in Gara Bray in Horus's tower. So it's actually tracked, it has a little patrol schedule doesn't normally attack you. I think this one did for some reason. Um, 
But yeah, if, if you wanted to cheat around a bit, you could turn this skeleton into your own little follower and have your own little necromantic tower. There's the ghost of the mayor. Let's talk to him. Alright, that's that for the cheat room. Where else? There was the little tower on the Isle of Ambrosia that I didn't go into at the time. Now that's the Hydra area. Okay, no more liches. We're done with the liches. Yeah. Is it here? Oh, that's the Catalyte. All right, this'll do. Um, because of this anti-magic field that's all around the island, I'm going. Did not bother. Hang on. Sentry, where are you? Come with me. You're my source of light. Such an amazing battle, killing all those booters. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, we're a bit overpowered for spiders now. Uh, I didn't bother going into this tower. I don't actually recall if there's much in there that's uh, particularly amazing. It's just kind of dusty and cobweb full. Oh, and there's a crystal ball. Go away! Dead guy. Dead guy's journal. The journal of Garrett Moore. Day one. I arrived upon this forsaken isle. Day three. Found the ruins of an edifice. A tower? Day four. New shelter. Beginning to rebuild the tower. Day seven. Day 12. Day 21. Basic support foundation almost completed. Moving from temporary shelter tomorrow. Day 29. Expanding tower. Began research and experiments to produce livestock breeds for food. 45. Tower complete. Near miss with experiments. Life soon, I'm sure of it. Um, thank you for following, Amiga Kami. Day 45. Tower complete. Near miss with experiments. Life soon, I'm sure of it. A73. I have done it. A combination of cells that reproduce without my assistance. Self-sustaining life is not far away. A97. I am near the answer, there is no doubt. But there are others who would see me fail. They change the sky to purple and hurl bolts of lightning towards me. A111. The others still seek to thwart me. I hear their voices commanding me to cease. I will never rest until I am done. A101. Again they come. They have sent a succubus to tempt me. Kiss me, kiss me, is all she would say. Nay, was my reply. Strong. A40,232. Ha, the voices now beg, but I will not finish until he is gone. The night is my haven and the dogs will bark. It's just a little weird. Uh, place you can find. We could refurbish this place and make it our home, but it's not that nice, really. It's not very close to the shops or the train station. Um, let's move on. What else do we have? Uh, there's a whole section of dungeon up here that we never went into called Dungeon Hate. It's not actually required for the main quest. But I did make my home in there once. Uh, made a little bit tricky by the fact that there's monsters that just... There's Troll. Lich around here somewhere. Which is everywhere. Poison fields. Uh, a mage, hello. Look, see, they've got a skeleton here and it's just dancing. How nice. There's something that happens when I walk in this room. But yeah, it's just uh, a bunch of prison cells, basically. I tried to do the place up a bit. Random guard. of corpses and soot and blood all over the place. Very homey. And a nice big dining area with um, a bit of a slime and a rat problem.
One thing that we found was this book here, written by Mordra, the spirit that we found on Scar Bray. Artifacts of Darkness by Mordra Morglin. Within the pages of this handwritten book are many references to device of destructive power. Amongst them are Mondain's skull and gem of immortality, Minax's crystal ring, and the dark core of Exodus's memories. More recent entries describe the crown of the Lich King, the Well of Souls, the mysterious Blackrock sword which apparently has the power to slay even one so powerful as Lord British. A short essay involving a metal plate hung above a door explains what seems to be a far simpler method of dispatching the noble monarch. Well, we do actually happen to have a the black sword, complete with demon in it, who has been very hungry for uh, killing people. Lord British did mess up our whole game for a bit there with the whole oink thing, so why don't we give him some payback? I'm trying to sleep! Yes, quite. Yes, master. What dost thou seek of thy servant? Arcadian asks you in a deep, harmonic voice. Uh, I'd like you to use your powers. Which of my powers dost thou seek to use? Uh, the death one, please. Death, yes. Where is the corpse of which thou dost speak? The dark sword begins to vibrate in your hand. Uh, that one. Yes, I have long sought the end of Lord British, my traitorous master. Hoggers, for what reason art thou brandishing that black sword in my presence? The daemon responds using your mouth. Which, um, that's not my face. I am a girl avatar. That's boy avatar face. This blade is thy doom, you spit the words. Lord British! Lord British looks truly taken aback, his eyes narrow calculatingly. What foul treachery is this? You find yourself unable to respond, and your muscles are clenching as if to lash out with the wicked blade in your hand. Perhaps when thou art sitting in a dungeon, thy tongue will loosen. Guards! Whack! And the guards aren't going to do much either. And we've even enraged Nistel there, it seems. And uh, there's a guard that needs to come in. Hey, there you go. Boy will take care of you. Yeah, do I have to move more walls away? Oh, okay. Mage has been taken care of. Is that everyone? Have we killed everyone in the castle yet? Well, that was certainly a messy way to uh, take out Lord British. Let's see what's on his corpse, shall we? I mean, look, he even gets a special... Uh, his own very special corpse with his head lopped off there. How gruesome. Inside is just a single scroll. Lord British's last will and testament. Being of sound mind and body, I hereby bequeath my all of my belongings to Nell, my beloved chambermaid. She has kept me warm on so many nights, which is more than I can say for most of my bloody subjects. And to our unborn child, I bequeath my crown. Long live the queen, or queen, whichever it shall be. Lord British. Hegelo <laughs> just faints. Oh, and we're already experiencing um, the bug. Um, this is a bug that I ran into on one of my very early playthroughs where I had amassed gold. And I don't know why it's happening now, just because we've killed the monarch, but the castle seems to be disintegrating. See? It's missing the roof, and the, missing a piece of roof there. Um... How ominous that it should happen now, once the ruler is dead. Look, here we go. Was that a load-bearing Lord British that we had there? <laughs> Sorry, Jeffrey, my old friend and companion. But yeah, it's, it's a bug. It's not supposed to look like this. But the game just kind of gives up on loading all of its entities 
and it seems that the castle is like the zero zero of the game world and it's also one of the focuses where it has the most entities around it that need to be loaded and uh, it just kind of fails easily hey, this bit's reloaded properly now it's temporary but it's not it doesn't look good anyway um, let's reload and we'll do that again British, we're coming for you. Where is he? Where is he? He's there, in the gardens. Fantastic. The Lord British, uh, he hangs around in the gardens at certain times of day. And there's this sign. The throne room of Lord British. And, um... Mordra's little anecdote about a metal plate hung above a door is in direct reference to this. If you wait until Lord British happens to be underneath it, moved away. Little guy, you must know what's coming. Then you double click it. That is precisely the thing to do, Avatar. He's dead. Yancy Hosman will pay. Um, and again, he gets a very custom death sprite with his body. Uh, with a gold pluck embedded in his head. This is apparently a reference to a time when uh, Richard Garriott, the real-life Lord British, uh, had some sort of uh, exit sign or something fall from a door and nearly hit him in the head. Anyway, the castle doesn't seem to have gotten enraged at us this time, so we'll take it as a blessing that that's the right course of action. What else we got? <clears throat> there is one really, really interesting bug, which I'm, I'll try and replicate here, uh, because this is where I first randomly stumbled across it and where I happened to find this weird discovery, but it's very extremely random, so I have no idea what's actually going to come of it. Um, but basically, here's Jana. Uh, let's put her death scythe away. Give her some other weapon. Uh, here, a fire doom staff. So she's got this fire doom stuff, right? Now, if we use the NPC ID tool, we can see that Jana is NPC ID 5. And what we can do is we can modify NPC 5. And here's, you know, all of her usual flags and stats and things. Uh, you can bump up her stats here if you want to cheat more directly than we did with the Serpent Venom. Uh, you can turn anyone into a, a party member. Want primary toggle is just a like a thing with the combat. Uh, leave T for target here. She currently has no primary target, no secondary target, and no oppressor. And that's just how the game keeps track of who is attacking who and who the next target's going to be. Kind of a neat little system. Um, business activity is how you get people to do blacksmithing activities, do baking, things like that. 31 is follow avatar we can exit out of that um, NPC status is all the different flags an NPC can have so they can be invisible they can be poisoned they can be dead um, there. the really interesting one that I stumbled across is this one pop weapon so this seems to be basically how the game handles your general um, random monsters in the woods, uh, you know, random bandits and what have you, bringing their weapons out or putting them away, maybe. Because if I use it, 
a pop weapon. Sword two-handed, unreadied. Hit a key. Now, Janna wasn't holding a sword two-handed. Hey, where are you going? She wasn't holding a sword two-handed, and uh, now she's definitely not holding anything. The Fire Doom staff that we gave her has just vanished into the... One interesting thing you can do, though, with the hack mover cheat on is you can move people. If we want to, we can put the boy here into Jana's backpack. And he immediately pops out because he's a party member. Hey, Jana! Okay, I think that's because we were messing around with her flags earlier. Uh, let's just ask her to leave. Then rejoin the party, just so that we've got all of those resources. Alright, so Jana here, not holding a weapon, and the sword two-handed was unpopped. If we modify NPC5, pop a weapon, it's sword two-handed readied, hit a key. And out of nowhere, she's produced a two-handed sword. Cool. What happens if we get Jana to hold the avatar? And this is, you know, this is the avatar, this is me. My identity in the world, the thing that I control. Uh, you can see she's just wielding me like a club right now, which is uh, kind of hot, actually. But what happens if we now use this special tool we've discovered, modify NPC5, and pop my body out of existence? Black hole spawns, everyone dies, lol. Well, it doesn't a black hole to spawn, I know that much, but I honestly don't know what we're going to see after I get out of the cheat menu here, because it is very, very random. Uh, it might be very boring, but it could be cool. Ugh. Okay, the game's window has refocused here. We have a an arrow. Seems to be focused on this spot here. Um, we can't move. We can't bring up the F3 menu. Can't bring. It, oh, we can bring up the F2 menu. That's. Easy. And we teleport to NPC number five. Get back to John. So we're here, but we don't have a body anymore. Is the problem. And I can't even hack move anything. Do I have an inventory? No. Nope, this is cursed. Didn't do much. Um, but the first time I tried this, what happens was I became a, a fence post. The game's window just recentered on this random fence post somewhere in the world. And. Um, it seems like, you know, you've destroyed the avatar's body, but the game still has to focus on some sort of item in the game. And it just picks the next one on the list, or something suitable in memory. Try that again, but it would be a lot of hit and miss. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. You can actually delete the avatar. What else we got? In the Hall of the Dead, we've seen the cheat, we've seen a lag node. Played around with this a little bit. Uh, you can create items with this menu, which is nice. I used to know a lot of the numbers for money and other things off by heart. So 644 is a stack of gold coins. Uh, it can be like whatever frame you want. Quantity 100, item created. Uh, those two coins there are actually 100 gold coins. Broken the game in so many different ways. Uh, it's not too many different ways, honestly. Um, but there are plenty of ways to break it, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, you can do things like this with the create menu to create keys. If you don't have a key, you can create a 641. Frame is whichever key you want. 
and the quality is the ID number of the key, which might be like 99. So that's given us a little pink key that might open a chest somewhere. Um, oh, yes. So another thing you can do... Elizabeth's body here has a sword and a shield in it. Push Alt and the 4 key, not F4, Alt and regular 4, you get this cursor, and it lets you dump the contents of inventories. So it's just dumped her items out on the floor there. Uh, and you can do that to people too. Hey, YOLO, think fast. Oh, he's got all of his stuff dumped. Not carrying anything now. Uh, you can do this to the avatar as well. And if I'm remembering right, as well as... Oh, no, that's, that's everything, is it? There was some way to get at an item which called itself a use code container. And it was really weird. It looks like a glowing chest. I remember using this technique, like this speech, on this chest here in the, the Knight's Bridge tournament. Um, and yeah, it just confirms that it's not a real chest. It doesn't actually have an inventory. Oh, and of course, the one thing that we can't lose is the Black Sword because it immediately teleports back. Uh, extremely randomly, but... Garish? Still part of the swamps. Somewhere around these swamps, there's a field of flowers. I think it's actually... Because that's Cove. Swamps, swamps, swamps. Happened to fly over it um, a couple of weeks ago while I was swapping carpets and boats and things like that. And it reminded me of its existence, but made more careful note of the coordinates. Oh, here we go. So up here, northwest of Gorlab Swamp. Gorlab Swamp? Oh, thank you, Neon Shake It, for the hydrate. Dark in my bedroom. I might put the um, the light on so that we can see more better. Yes. <laughs> yes, I put the light on. up here there's this random field of flowers that you wouldn't normally find unless you're really power exploring off the beaten track and if we wander into it people just start falling asleep i think it's a reference to the wizard of oz um i think but it's just Extremely random, just out here in the middle of nowhere. There's this huge field of flowers, and uh, yeah, you'll need all on the floor. Um, what else? We did touch on the blacksmith cheat room at the start of the game because right here you can build a stairway out of chests, get on the roof, and then go behind the chimney like so to get to the secret cheat room, but we never actually properly went through it and uh, bought everything. Obviously you've got all sorts of cheaty items here.
all these teleporters to the various shrines. Will you be playing Underworld 2 before playing Part 2? Sorry if already asked. <sighs> Son of Eld. Comes up every every time I stream. Will you be playing Underworld 2? When are you playing Underworld 2? I really should make a command for it. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine, Son of Eld. It's fine. Um, I've been debating this myself. What to play next. Um, I think I will. At the very least, we could have a go at it. Um, chronologically, yeah, it's the next one in the series. Um, the, the trouble is, it's just like, I had this old save game that was quite close to the end of the game, and then I dropped it and got lost and got stuck. Uh, so it pains me to start over again, knowing that I had that one save that was very close to the end and I had all these nice things. Now, restart for the contents? Yeah, it is probably the best thing. Um, I'm just worried it'll take too long because Ultima 7 here, I know like the back of my hand. So we've, we beat it in 20 episodes. Underworld 2, I remember being pretty long, but I don't remember like all the places I go to and where to go next. And there's eight different worlds and yeah, it, it might be a bit of a slog. Apparently this cheat room is why the Lord British anti-cheat room happened. During development, they redirected the teleporter to the anti-cheat room, then changed it back for some reason. Interesting. I would have thought that during development, they would want this cheat room to be around so that they could go to all the different places and be like, oh, right, I need to go to um, the Time Lord's place, which is probably this one. You left the small sphere. I did not. Ultra World 2 speedrun is like 20 minutes too long for me. Hey, useless Jetty, welcome on in. Um, yeah, that's weird, because I would have expected that development, you want the uh, the proper cheat room, and then when you did the release, you would change it sneakily to the anti-cheat room. Well, there you go. He's got he's got wiki links to support him and everything. All right, Calfish, I, I believe you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, much like everything else, that cheat room exists, uh, does it exist here? No, this is just some random cave with bandits. It exists somewhere. Let's go have a look. It actually exists in two parts because the two rooms have to be hidden away in the mountains somewhere. So this part is over here and then the bigger part of it is hidden where are we ah over here next to vespa yeah once we knew how to cheat and teleport around. It was far too tempting to... Uh... Look at this, it's like a little mini battle of um, the, the Mines of Moria where they've done their last stand. We never had an excuse to go into this particular cave. But it's out here in Vesper if you want it. Ah, uh, giant scorpions. Not out of range. But if I remember right, there's treasure to be had. Not that we really need treasure now. Actually move doors out of the way. Ah, secret door. dragon. Yeah, there we go. Magic armor. Not bad. Uh, we've already seen the different little um, beer, cube, and tetrahedron gem.
in the bee cave. I did find that one box that I Yeah, I don't know. I feel like maybe now I can just pick a house and we can do a bit of house flipper, Ultima 7 style. Um, another particular Oh wait, I mean there's the Armageddon spell, obviously. Did we reload since the last one we did? I think Yola bit the dust there. <laughs> right, of course, I dumped my items, so I don't have my items anymore. Go back to the throne. Here, backpack back on. Uh, the Armageddon spell, yes. A spell that for some reason is available for sale to any mage who wants it and has attained the 8th level of spellcasting. Uh, the results are predictable. Vaskal and Mani in Corp her Tim and everyone dies. Except they don't really die. They can't be resurrected because they haven't produced a corpse. Um... What happens is they fall asleep in much the same way as the anti-cheat system does. And there's only a few people who can survive that. Uh, Atlin being one of them. Fortunately, we've killed him, so we can't go talk. Lord British being another one. Wake up. I killed everyone. Fool! What possessed thee to cast that damned Armageddon spell? I knew it was dangerous. Thou didst know it was dangerous? Now look at us. We are all alone on the entire planet. Britannia is ruined. What kind of avatar art thou? Now, with no moon gates working, we are both forced to spend eternity in this blasted wasteland. Of course, it could be viewed as a clever solution to all your problems. After all, not even this so-called guardian would want Britannia now. And <laughs> so that's what happens if you uh, decide to use the spell to kill everyone. Why is that a spell that's available? I suspect, I mean, I never did get round to playing Ultima Online, much as I wanted to back in the day. But I suspect Ultima Online would have removed that spell from the spell list. Probably. Can you imagine trying to run an MMO where anyone who reaches level 8 can just wipe out the entire server? Um, the people who do survive the Armageddon spell are Lord British, Batlin, who has a nice bit of dialogue, but... Um, it's the Ferryman. He seems a bit disgruntled. I told you I would be here until all of eternity. Yep. Uh, yes, let's go. Oh, I don't actually have any cash on me. Sorry. You think Horus survives? Because he is an immortal undead lich. Yo, wake up. Oh, okay. So it's just basically Batlin and Lord British and myself. Uh... One thing actually we could do is show off some of these other spells that we never got around. It always seems to be more efficient to just press the C key and uh, let my party kill everyone rather than fumbling around in my spell book and doing things. One moment, I need to. Oh, There we go. First stream. Uh, so here we are in the Fellowship Hall. They're about to begin their sermon. It's a very formal affair. Um, what might be fun, though, is if we forced them all to dance. Oh, yeah, dance. Yeah, I'm bad. 
But no, that's not enough. More. More dancing, I say. Of course, the magic words for that spell is everybody dance now. Boogie! <laughs> What else we got? Um, I think the spellbook really takes off after like the fifth circle. Don't blame it on the sunshine. <laughs> uh, clone? We didn't actually bother cloning anyone. But in theory, we could take our Ubermensch Spark and make another one of them. Spark meets Spark. Uh, that one doesn't get an inventory that we can see, but they'll be just as strong, able to kill, oh, I don't know, everyone here. Avatar? Yeah, I'm dispatching them too quickly, so uh, the boy and the boy clone aren't ever getting an opportunity to fight them. Oh, well. Um, I mean, obviously we can resurrect them now because we have that spell, uh, but we can also do things like Magic Storm, which is fun because it just goes zap, 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 zap until everyone's dead, uh, including, I guess, the boy clone, who is not considered part of our party exactly. Poison Field, Sleep Field, Tremor, we, we've seen those. Death Bolt, we, we saw that. Oh, Energy Field lets us make our own little annoying snappy rectangles. We could wall off things if we wanted to do things strategically. Not that we have a need to do anything strategically. Uh, mass Might, Mass Charm, let's sort of just do good things for your party or Never did summon anything. Can we summon dragons? That seemed to fail. Summon? If I recall correctly, it depends on whereabouts you are. So if we're in the desert, perhaps. There we go, we got some skeleton buddies. Mm. Pretend we're a necromancer and advance on the town of Vespa. Ah. Yeah. Back. Back, my minions. You had best not do that, Avatar. Oh, who are you, my conscience? Um, so yeah, just rampaging around Britannia, that's fine. Time stop, uh, mass death we tried out. I think that's about it. Delayed Blast is a weird one. Uh, it's like a fireball, except it doesn't happen immediately. I'm doing well. I played Echo the Dolphin for the first time. Days. Run away. Oh yeah, it's a, a classic. So I reckon that's about all of that stuff. Um, in terms of houses we could live in, there's several in New Magencia that were a bit like dusty and could do with some renovation. There's a couple in uh, Bray that are definitely in need of some upkeep. Uh, for example, there's this one that the alchemist lives in. You know, it's, it's a lot of soot and everything, but it has a lovely uh, sort of open air balcony thing going on. But then all of these walls, we can't really fix those up is the problem. Uh, we can fix up the soot and the debris everywhere, not the walls, because the game won't let us permanently change those. Uh, where else? There was a neat little house on Turfin that we came 
couple, I think, actually. Waiting to be moved into? This one has lots of flowers and things, yeah. Or there's this one I quite like on Buccaneer's Den, but not the main island. There's a little island out of the way that we looked at before, obviously. Again, it's ruined, but um, it's a fixer-upper, you know? I forget what's in the mountainside here. I'm not sure if there is anything. Not really enough room to hide anything good. Uh, where else could we possibly look? Basically anywhere. Uh, if you don't mind a bit of murder of the existing residents. Oh yeah, there's a log cabin here, but I think it'll be full of pirates that are spawning. You know pirates yet? Oh, it's got this tree stump in the middle, which I think we can't remove. Um, did you just move pieces of the game, lol? Yes, Neon Shake It. Um, I've got the hack mover thing on. H which just bypasses the normal uh, controls on what's possible to be moved and what. But you'll notice that if we move the tree stump and these chairs and this rug into the ocean there, if we leave and come back, the chairs have remembered where their positions are because chairs are things that the avatar can normally move. But the tree stump and the rug aren't normally possible to be moved, so the game optimizes that in a bit and uh, just considers it, you, know, you can't move it, so I'm not going to bother recording the location of this in memory or in your save game anyway. Uh, so that affected a lot on what me and my sister could uh, choose for new houses to live in and renovate. Like this cactus leaves behind a little sort of grain square in the sand where the game knows that's supposed to be there. It's actually sort of a Hall of Mirrors effect. Um, if we leave and go back, they'll be back where they were. But what we did was occasionally we wanted to actually like build a brand new house from scratch. And here in Lord British's castle are these walls that are um, controlled by these levers. The secret passages. So the game has to remember the position and orientation of these walls. And if we were to take a few of them with us, then we could go and build our own house out in the middle of nowhere, uh, with walls at least. Unfortunately, coming across good roofing material was very difficult. In so that's, that's always made it a little hard to make a really nice house, you know? So we often just moved into existing houses. Hey, happy light! Good to see you, friend. How are you doing? We are wrapping up Ultima 7 in the weirdest way, healing walls from the castle. And we're either going to build a house or we're going to renovate a house. We haven't decided yet. With the hydrate. Good to see you too. All good. Finding houses where the resident is about to be gone. Yes. <clears throat> in all honesty, like in the base game, much like. If you wanted to move just into the house, you could do that by killing them. But because we're cheating, we could actually just persuade them to not live there anymore, modify their schedule so that they go live somewhere else. A much more humane option. Another thing you can make use of sometimes is these walls, uh, well, these stairs, but be a wall of different.
These tapestries are nice too. We should probably not just load up my inventory because it's going to be very difficult. Hmm, this drawbridge. You know, I never considered it, but um, that would make for a good roof. Yoink. We're taking it, and we're taking the other drawbridge that we know of in uh, Moonglow. This is a very fancy house. Uh, there's an astronomical alignment coming, but uh, fine, no rush. Who love this music, though. I don't think these bits of... No. Oh yes, we could get a... Uh... Oh. And the telescope acts a bit like the Wizard Peer spell that lets you just... Or no, it's sorry, Wizard Eye. Look around. Yeah, we'll take your telescope. Oh, gremlins. I think we made a net profit on those gremlins. They steal food from you, but they also drop food when they die. So yeah, assuming we wanted to build ourselves a little hut somewhere, rather than uh, re like take over one that was existing, those with some special software, we could build a little house in the desert, or hmm. We want to do I'll tell you what down here got this guy's house and the flower man got a very nice very unique little thing going on here what if we were to no no it's a bit cruel I want to do this properly house for the star. But what if we were to take over one of the other houses that Yes, but it's Yes. Sorry, deliberation. Um I shouldn't put too much thought into it because it's not like I'm gonna keep Dave game and role play the avatar living out her existence, not going back home, but not going to destroy the Black Gate, just sort of pondering things. I'll tell you what we could do actually. Save me from the burden of choosing a location. We can do what I did once. Oh dear, where is my cart? Where did we park the cart? Was it up here in... Yes, okay, we parked the cart here. What I did once... Giddy up. Um, you see, this is the cart that the game gives you that lets you speed around. Uh, but what you can actually do is just rip it to shreds and just save a couple of seats. And that's all you actually need for the card. So let's put these things out here. Yep. Oh, that would 
would fit perfectly. Now we might keep the horses, I don't know. But what you can do is... Inventory sorting time, extreme edition. Up a bunch of stone out here, yep. Basically playing Minecraft now. Uh, here we go, some walls. And remove the cart's wheels. Oh dear, it's going to be a bit jam. Game rotates items. The wall is pointing this way. Probably get rid of the horses. How am I going to do this bit? Uh, uh, take the chairs out for the moment. Uh, yeah, you see, you can basically refurbish your cart to be more like a house. And then you can just live in your cart. Horses, you can go over there. I don't know if this is already too wide, so we'll need to do some testing. These weird little bits. Bunch of other stuff we could steal. So it's Minecraft with extra steps, exactly. That's the sort of outline we want. Will this be sufficient? They almost did it. They had to think about it for the pathfinding. Yeah, that's not going to work, Avatar. It's fine. Yep. Musical chairs, it's hard to get a seat. might be easier if we ditched someone. Uh, entry. No, you're carrying the light. Steve. Right here. Um, boy. Yes. Yeah. Giddy up. No, they're confused now about which seat is the uh, main seat. Giddy up. All right. Now let's find out exactly how much of this is a cart. All right, so we've lost the front walls. And we've lost a few more walls, but here you go. It's a, it's a cart. The cart house. Oof. Okay, that's a little difficult to park. Uh, I tell you what we could do. We could do it with the magic carpet. That might be a little easier because we'd at least see where the boundaries are. But the carpet is a bit smaller. Uh, okay.
Okay, so let's ditch our cart here. All right, people, you can come back. Grab these things, which are now rotated. Uh, that's going to make things interesting. Grab that crate that I had. Cart. I think we parked here. It's, it's hilarious, Guardian. It's absolutely, yeah. Park here. Alright, we'll do our, our house on top of this. Itch. For the moment, let's put. Wilhelm scream. Alright. So, walls. A bit easier with this one. Paging on you. Thing will be though that these drawbridges are actually longer than we will need for the size of the carpet. So maybe we want to raid something else for the roof. And yeah, it'll be pretty cozy is the problem. Feels a bit like Tetris, actually. Yeah, all of those walls are not pointed. That one. What we can do is use the carpet itself to... My, I got very greedy with the walls, didn't I? down somewhere. All eight chairs, there should be no reason to stop from taking into the air with this stone on our magic carpet. Oh, you know what? I've got it that, so it's right up against the wall now, that's why. You can do this. There we go. 
Magic carpet house. Actually, what I want to do here is fix this wall up. Actually, easier to build this while midair. Alright, the colours are a bit off, but it's fine. We're just showing off here. Let's land. I do not believe we can hide here safely. Yeah, no, no surprise there. do is oh here's a door perfect we need a door and then the stairs that we got pointing like north south so let's see if we can take off and get ourselves a stairway up to the I come back after my nose is bleeding for a while what are we doing now? Well, Cyclone, uh, we have fitted the magic carpet with thick stone walls and are busy turning it into our own little magic carpet house, which is proving a little difficult to actually uh, win. There we go. Flying magic carpet house. And here. Oh, that messed the door up a little bit. Yes, Boggers, John asks. No, that's fine. Uh, so what I was thinking was... Pull the chairs out for a moment. The lower level... Would have a stairwell that goes up the roof of the carpet. So you go in, you can walk up to the rooftop of the carpet. I wonder if... Yeah, these are going to be too big. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised. Normally, finding roof material in this game is very difficult. Um, but yeah, you could, you could walk up to there. Stuck on the roof. Uh, another bit of nice building material that you can get that is Ferryman's Ferry. That's got to round when the game moves it toward the shore. And if you're all done with the Scar Bray quest line, then there's no reason not to just grab delightful roofing material. I once made a house out of powder kegs. So we could slap these down as a sort of makeshift roof. Uh, we could have them overlap a bit, it'll be a bit janky. But what here is not janky. Yeah, that would actually have to do, I think. And then 
I guess we could put the seats up on the top here. Room between them. I don't know. Looks absolutely awful. Is it drivable? Maybe not. Put it too high. Because there is a built in height limit with the game. Oh, here we go. There we go. I think we're hovering not quite as far up off the ground anymore. But we're hovering. We're able to move around. And we could grab these bits of stone here. Sort of round out the roof a bit. Or maybe not. <laughs> well, come on in, uh, Steph. We are turning the magic carpet into a house carpet. House, house magic carpet. Um, I figured what we would be nice is if we had the... Uh, where is it? Let's land. I can't believe we can land here safely. What makes you think that any part of this is safe, Janna? Slam. Go back downstairs. Very carefully, come on. Single file. Go downstairs to our lounge room. Uh, where did I put that telescope? It's still in my backpack. What in the inadequate playtesting budget is going on here? Well, uh, we're cheating like crazy and we're building houses. And in this case, we're building a house on top of the magic carpet so that we can have our very own armored flying vehicle slash house. Can we take off with the telescope? We can! We, we only went up about two squares in the game. But we can use the telescope to look around. See? And we can fly around on the carpet. Oh! We lost the telescope. We made a turn and it's just sort of floating in the dead there. Right now. Okay, this is working, but now the game is refusing to let the carpet rotate. I've noticed the... Um, cart will do this as well if you have certain objects on it that uh, kind of overlap the boundary of it. Oh well, that's disappointing, but it's fine. Uh, can we land here? Oh, look at how janky that looks now. The game does not know what to do with all these objects. Ah, uh, but yeah, that's about it. We we could refurbish these houses here. Like, uh, grab this barrel, do some tidying up. It looks like we're going to be stuck on Britannia for some time. We may as well make the most of it. Set up a nice little quiet life here on Seraphim. Ooh, we could clean up Lock Lake if we wanted to. Is your character named Poggers? Lol. Of course, I'm the Avatar. Poggers. Yeah. Um, here, let's talk to our good friend Yolo. Yes, my friend, Yolo asks. Um, what's your name? Your friend's not. What, art thou joking, milady? Thou dost not know thine own friend, Iolo? I need to trigger someone to say hello, like... Poggers? Yes, Poggers, Spark asks. What dost thou want? What's your cat's name? 
Uh, my cat's name is Poppy. You can see her there on the Poppy cam. She's in the bedroom at the moment, having a good snooze on what was once my jacket. Uh, it was a nice fuzzy jacket that my friend gifted me. <laughs> I thought it was Yolo. I do pronounce his name Yolo sometimes. Uh, but it is very much definitely Poppy's. Uh, uh, bye. All right, I will speak with you later. So we'll call this our home, and uh, I want to get a bit of furniture for it, which involves, of course, stealing it from other places in the world. Here. Yeah. Would carefully pick out each book that I want individually, but we'll just put them up for show, you know. Being learned. I have a grandfather clock, sure. You. Uh, these tables look fancy, but the, the grey tables, um. Yeah, this one. And sure, like I'll have a little cauldron with magical stuff in it. It seems fun. Stuff, magical stuff. I have a cat also. Her name is Hissy. Oh, that's nice. Uh, I missed the start. How come you can pick up and carry so many things? Oh, we've got the hack mover cheat on, Steph. Yes. So H for hack mover, on or off. Um, we already beat the game, so... This is just me all being about uh, showing off random little things that we can do. Where was our house? It was... Oops, no, that's the carpet. You can pick up yourself as well. So let's put these shelves down. Uh, table heat. Okay, table just vanished into the ether. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, put a book down. Okay, and then put the shelf on top of that so it's stacked up. Supposed to be. Careful. Another shelf on top of that. The walls are five units high, so um, you may buy my own bootstraps, yes. Put things there, yes. Nice. Um, down. Book. Put down, like, ooh, I've got a little gem that I've picked up all in my adventures. Sure, why not? Yeah, I should be putting stuff into this crate for a while. Uh, where did that table go? No, really, where did the table go? I'll have a little work table here. Burner on that. Test tubes. Better if they were the other way around. So let's put them on our magic carpet house. <clears throat> Rotate the magic carpet house. Oh, we've lost the door. Always close the door when you're taking off or landing. Get down the stairs. I know it's difficult because this is an incredibly janky house. Freedom. And there is our test tubes that are now rotated the way we want. Nice. Uh, we'll need a bed, of course. Let's go steal Lord British's bed. He won't be needing it. And 
these tapestries are nice, although the walls that we've got, I don't know if we've got room. We'll take a nightstand at least. What do you mean, no? Have hack mover on. Damn. I just picked up a bed. What makes you think I can't take a, a little lit light source here? Lit light source goes in the chest. Is it because it's lit? And the game doesn't want you to have a, a lit object inside a container? It is. I mean, the game is totally okay with you having a, a fire sword inside a backpack or a fire doom staff, but uh, heaven forbid you have a candle in there. Yeah, no, that's, that's interesting to know. Um, what else can we steal while we're at the castle? There's the, uh, the baking hearth, which is interesting. I think most of it is stuff that doesn't stay where you put it. Um, but the active part of it is this uh, glowing bit. Walk away and see what... Okay, yeah, we could steal, um, I mean, borrow baking hearth, do our own baking. Um, and sure, I'll take that. Uh, probably plenty. We've just got a, a small, humble little abode. So how about we the baking heart? Here. You know what? We could do it outside. Like that doesn't seem too weird, right? Having a, a baking hearth outside of a Oh, come on. There, uh, we'll have the rolling. Oh, that makes room for the bed anyway. I kind of want to see if it will fit here. But then we've got the nightstand that's like oriented the other way, so maybe... I mean, no one will notice if the clock is the wrong way around, because if you look at it from that angle, it just looks, oh yeah, you've got a grandfather clock on that wall. And then we can have the bed next to the north window. I mean, then you know what? We could have path on the inside of the building. Put it in there. Path on the outside might depend on the council and bushfire risk zone you're in. Yeah, I'm the avatar, Steph, so um, what I say goes, basically. Uh, if the council has a problem, they can bring it up with my The Black Sword. That's just out of the way a bit. Uh, we need chairs. We need at least one chair for the study. What would be a good one? Raid like the mayor's office in Trin. Move the trees out of the way, break into someone's house. Yeah, the red just... I don't know if the red goes with everything else. 
Ooh, purple. Purple's nice. I'll take purple. And a quill, yes. And the bill of underwater scavenging and critic quick playing. And this pot plant. And we need some sort of light sources as well, so yeah, uh, a couple of those, that'll be nice. Oh, and what am I thinking? We need plates to eat off of. Oops. Fine. Uh, why don't we take this whole table? Ah, yes, it's not a democracy, it's my the black sword cursey. <laughs> exactly. I mean, hey, I'm the one with the Armageddon spell. You see how much I'm not using the Armageddon spell today? But if I don't get to build my house the way I want to, I might feel like trying out the Armageddon spell. Uh, yes, yes, you're all hungry. East. Ah, home sweet home. This is already feeling a lot nicer than uh, cobweb infested interior. We've got our nice purple chair. What else did we pick up? There's a table. Hmm. Not much room for the table. Unless... Unless we put the cauldron there, we could have... Okay, guys, you need to get out of my house while I'm... In the way. Put the table here next to the window, which is nice. Will... Mount, yes. Light source there, why not? Wanna line on the table plant in the corner there. Plate on the table. We should have taken another chair. But I guess, you know, it's just a small place, just a cozy little place for the end. We can reuse the same chair. Build as you will, Avatar, sir. Have two separate hearths on the outside, go nuts. Yeah, there are actually only two hearths in the entire game that we could have, so... Studio apartments be like that. They do. I like this. This is not bad. Got our, our fancy green marble shelves. Lights. Bake our own bread if we want. Do our own magic spells. Yeah. Green shop. Very nice. Um I'm feeling like maybe calling it here. Uh I think we've done a really good work with the house. Much cozier looking, very fancy. Go to sleep in our own bed. In how many hours shall we wake thee up, Poggers? Eight hours of sleep. Oh, eight hours of sleep. Arise, Poggers. Time to continue the quest. Or time to just continue not ending the game. Because uh, it's fine. Because the Guardian is taken care of. If he comes through, he gets a cannonball to the face. Imagine getting eight hours of sleep. Right, Carlfish? This is an actual fantasy game. You know, it occurs to me that with my, um... With my camera on at the moment here, uh, the only thing that's illuminating my face... It, with with the, the t-shirt, the only thing that's illuminating my face is the, the monitor. I've got a dark t-shirt on. Um, I'm kind of just a floating head. I should really chroma key this stuff and just be a, a, a proper floating head. Um, but let's see. First of all, let's let's focus on the cat because uh, 
Um, so as I said, I'm participating in Dosember, where you can see a bunch of other who have been playing DOS games all through December, uh, now known as Dosember, which is cool. Uh, and what I can do is see if anyone else is on. Nobody sad face. Now come on, I know that James Neko is streaming DOS games right now. So could you just check again? Uh, my, my thing has been a bit buggy and I don't know why exactly. But when it does resolve, it resolves properly. Right then, currently live. Dick Lamong, James Neko, Kinecos Dragon, and Mr. Tompa. I don't have... Let's have a look. Or the adverts to look watch? Did I misspell that? Oh yeah, of course. Kinokos Dragon is Dragon with two N's. Raids disabled. Why would you do December but also have raids disabled? Um, I'm just gonna trust them that they've got they've got that tag on raids disabled, that means they're probably not. It's, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, check out. Of course, if I was really smart, I would turn those into links that I could just... This will work too. And if I wanted extra special brownie points, I would list what game they're currently playing. This does. I think this is um, one of the alien mods for Doom. Uh, it's not the alien mod that I remember playing back in the day. But it is alien themed and it looks very Doomish. Although it's clearly very heavily modded. What else? Who's the other one? Mr. I can't spell. No, that's Twitter. Please wait. At some point, I want to build an actual like rating out screen that will let me preview what we're looking at. Uh, Mr. Tompa is in with the Dosember tag, but is this like GTA three or something? Doesn't look DOS. What if I click on the DOS ember tag? Anyone else on it that I don't have on my actual list? Uh, Rig is doing Quest for Glory One. Rig is a big intimidator. No, I think we're gonna go say hello to De Glamon, which is if I'm butchering. Because this is an interesting looking alien alien modded doom, I guess, is what we're looking at. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for coming along. Uh, it is always a pleasure to share these games with you and um, muck around with old school retro nostalgia. And uh, thank you again, Bumfluff Tornado, for the raid. Very cool of you. We have a raid call. Got them. Two of the uh, old bongo and tap echoes. Uh, like, um, no way, son of a um, Always nice to um, nice to stream things and have people see them and. Just kind of hang out, you know? Uh, definitely this particular one today was a much more cozy vibe than usual, just having a house flipping and cheating and exploring the nooks and crannies of Ultima 7 kind of game. Uh, next week, we're definitely going to look at Ultima Underworld 2. 
because chronologically that's next. And I'll see what I can do about maybe like actually starting from scratch and everything. Yeah, so that might be what we do next. Or maybe a couple of random one-offs. Yeah, maybe that. Just like, because if we're going to get into another big RPG after finishing the, this big RPG, maybe I'll do something random as a one-off. That could be fun. Uh, so in summary, next week, who knows? And uh, thank you all for coming along. We will go raid out now and say, uh, Deglamont. You have no obligation to stick around for the raid, but you know if you want to, it's it's all December. It's all uh, good fun. Uh, you know you can see the Discord and other links and what have you. Uh, useless Steady, I'll see you. Uh, Steph, uh, thanks for the GGs. Uh, properly put Ultima Seven to bed now until we do Ultima 7 Part 2 Serpentile in some future time. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Happy December. Bye-bye.